Hey guys, so in this video I want to introduce a very classic problem in gravitation where we're going to have an object uh, being pulled by other objects, by multiple objects, in the two-dimensional plane. So let me show you how it works. Alright, so here I have four small spheres. They're all um, 100 kilograms. Um, so I can say, I can just say these are all M's. M's everywhere. And M equals 100 kilograms. They're small, which means we can disregard the size of their radius, right? Um, they're arranged as shown, forming a square of sides uh, 10 centimeters. It's a square, so all these sides have a length of L everywhere. Let me just do this, L, 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 and L equals 0.10 meters. Um, and I want to know the, uh, I want to calculate the magnitude and direction of the net force acting on the sphere on the bottom left corner. So I want to know what is the net force here. So remember, the idea is that masses, according to the universal law of gravitation, um, attract each other. So this guy is going to get pulled up by this force. Um, it's going to get pulled to the right, uh, I'm sorry, by this mass. It's going to get pulled to the right by this other mass. And it's going to get pulled in this direction by this other mass over here. Okay, I'm going to call this 1, 2, 3, 4. So I can call this F1, F2, and F3. Remember that these, these forces are mutual forces. So, you know, this guy is also being pulled down this way. Uh, but now we're focusing on object four, the one on the bottom corner right there. Okay? So the net force acting on four is just the sum of all forces on four. So it's just F1 plus F2 plus F3. But remember, forces are vectors, so this is a vector addition, which means you can't simply calculate those numbers and add them up as you would add regular scalar addition. You have to do vector addition here. So a key thing I need you to remember is that every vector is made up of components, and the magnitude of every, of every vector, or of any vector, is given by the Pythagorean theorem of its components. So F net 4 is the square root of, I'm going to call this F4x plus F4y, okay? So it's two components, and that's because you're going to end up with something like this, um, F net on 4x will be this way, F net on 4y will be this way, um, and then that will, the, the two will combine to form a F net an object for. So this is just taking us back to vector addition. Okay, And the angle of the net force on 4, I'm just going to call that theta 4, is the arc tangent, the arc tangent of y over x. So 4y, 4x. So these are the two things I want. So to get these two variables, all you have to do is find f4x, f4y, f4x, f4y, and then we'll be able to plug it back into this equation. All right, so let's do that. How do I find f4x? Well, if f total is f1, f2, f3, then f4x is f1x, f2x, and f3x. Okay, and f4y follows the same pattern. f1y, f2y, F3y. So now I have to get these six numbers, and then I'll be able to plug it all in. But what is F1? F1 is the pull, the attraction between, F1 is this arrow right here, it's the attraction between the 1 and the 4. So let's do that. It's G, M1, M2, or I should say M1, M4, divided by the distance between 1 and 4 squared. So g, which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Mass 1, all the masses are 100 kilograms, so I'm just going to put 100 here and 100 here, divided by the distance squared. The distance is L, right? L right here between these two. So that's 0.1 squared. If you solve this whole thing, I have it here. If you solve this whole thing, you get... If you solve this whole thing, got it, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 
fifth. Okay? Times 10 to the negative fifth. All right, so now um, what I need to do is I need to split this into um, F1Y and F1X. But if you look at F1, F1 is going straight in the y-axis, which means F1X is 0, and F1Y is just a whole number. So when I found F1, it was actually the same thing as my F1Y. So it's 6.67 times 10 to the negative fifth, okay? Just to be clear, if you found a force this way, this is also the FY, and then FX is just 0 because it has no component, okay? So now let's find F2. Actually, let's do F3 first because it's going to the right over here. F3 will be G, M3, M4. Again, it's between 3 and 4, divided by the distance between 3 and 4 squared. And all these numbers are exactly the same, you might notice. And these questions are kind of long, so what they do sometimes to make it a little bit more manageable, they'll, they'll give you all the numbers are the same or something like that. The distance is still a point 0.1. That way it's going to, if the, all the numbers are the same, this is easier to work out faster. It's the same exact number, so you get the same exact number here. 667 times 10 to negative fifth. When I split this, F3x and F3y, notice that F3 is flat this way, so F3y will be 0, and F3x will be 6.67 times 10 to the negative fifth. So it's the inverse of F1. F1 is on the y, F3 is flat in the x. F2, however, is at an angle, and when I calculate F2, I'm going to have to decompose it, and then the numbers will actually look different. Okay, so let's find F2 real quick. F2 is um, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. The two masses, again, 100 and 100. Now, there's something that's different about F2. The distance between 4 and 2 is not L, is not L, okay? So I'm going to have to get it by writing, by drawing a little triangle here. So I want to know what is this distance here. Let's call this X just for now. And then I have this length here is L, this length here is L. By the way, I hope you figure this out. This is a 45 degree angle because it's splitting the square um, the square right down the middle. To find x, you can use Pythagorean theorem. x squared equals l squared plus l squared. So x squared equals 2l squared. So x is the square root of 2l squared. In other words, x is the square root of 2l. And in this case, l is 0.1. So x ends up being um, 0.141 meters. I know it looks long because it took a bunch of lines, but that's because because I was uh, restricted to a tiny little space there. Okay. So the idea is that this number here is actually 0.141 squared. And just to be clear, this comes from here. Okay. So it's no longer going to look exactly like this. It's going to be a little bit different. And I get a 3.34 times 10 to the fifth, or 10 to the negative fifth. When you split this into F2x and F2y, F2x is F2 cosine of theta. And theta here is 45. And F2y is F2 sine of 45. So you just have to plug in these numbers. You might even remember that the sine of 45 and the cosine of 45 are the same. So when you do this, you should get the same answer. And that shouldn't be a surprise. This is 236 times 10 to the negative fifth. 236 times 10 to the negative fifth. Obviously, all these things are measured in Newtons. Really long. But once I found F1, F2, and F3, and I found the x and y components, I am now ready to just piece everything together back in here. So we're going to work our way back and work on this piece and then come back and work here. Okay? So F1x, this is now just plugging it in, F1x is 0. F2x is, F2x is over here, is 2.36 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now, as you do this, remember, you have to worry about positives and negatives. If you look at F2x, F2 is going this way, 
f2x is to the right, right? x f2x is to the right, so it will be positive. Okay. So f2x is positive. F2y is positive as well. In fact, all these numbers are positive. F1 over here, y is a positive, and F3x is a positive. All the numbers are up or to the right, so they're all going to be positive, which is nice. Okay, plus F3x, F3x um, is right here. So 6.67 times 10 to the negative fifth. If you go to the y-axis, I have F1y, F1y right here, 6.67 times 10 to the negative fifth. Um, F2y is this number, 2.36 times 10 to the negative fifth. And F3y is zero. And you might notice that these numbers will they both have a zero, right? So there's a lot of symmetry here. All these numbers are the same. So you're going to get the same answer for both. And it's going to be completely symmetric. Uh, the answer will be, for both of these guys, the answer will be, let's make this a little bit different, um, 9.03 times 10 to the negative fifth. Obviously Newtons. This is 9.03 times 10 to the negative fifth. Newtons. Okay, now that I got these, they're sort of the preliminary answers. I can just plug them in here. So we're going to finally work all the way back here. And this is 903 times 10 to the negative fifth squared plus 903 times 10 to the negative fifth squared. And when you do all this, you get a 12.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. You might have done this as 1.28 times 10 to the negative fourth, but everything has been to the power of negative five, so I decided to keep it that way, but it doesn't really matter. When you do this here, you get the arc tangent of 903 times 10 to the negative fifth, 903 times 10 to the negative fifth. I hope you see that this is just one, so it's the arc tangent of one, which is 45. And it's 45, not because F2 is 45, but because this is fully symmetric, that this is 45, but also these two here, the X and Y have the same magnitude. So the net result of these two is right down the middle, plus the guy that's down the middle as well. So it should make sense that this is a 45. Pretty long question, uh, but again, it typically comes with a lot of symmetry to make it a little bit easier. Um, it's a lot of work. It's annoying because you have these big numbers and multiplications that you have to do. So you got to practice this, make sure that you can do it. Um, in terms of process, I think it's fairly straightforward. This is basically good old vector addition, except that to calc instead of being given these forces, you have to actually calculate them using this big ugly equation. Other than that, it's just basic vector addition, uh, two-dimensional vector addition that we've done in the past. Cool. That said, I want you guys to try the next one. Uh, it's similar, but obviously a little bit different. There's still um, some, there's still some uh, uh, symmetry there that's going to make things a little bit simpler. And we want to know what is the net force on this guy over here. All right, let's give that a try.